It is the only option for now. Well, those were the words of the Kenya Wildlife Service Chairman, Dr. Richard Leakey, after signing the controversial deal for the Standard Gauge Railway to pass through the Nairobi National Park. The National Land Commission, the Kenya Wildlife Service and the Kenya Railways signed the agreement that will see 216 acres of the park isolated for the construction of the stretch of railway once it reaches Nairobi. Keaton's Timothy Oteno reports. The debate on whether to allow the standard gauge railway to pass through the Nairobi National Park has been put to rest after the signing of an agreement between the National Lands Commission, Kenya Railways and the Kenya Wildlife Service. May I ask you, General, to read the next signatory? The deal promises that the original boundary for the park will not be compromised. The agreement will also see money sent to the KWS in form of compensation for the land be put into a wildlife endowment fund for the national conservation exercises. Appearing at a joint press conference at the KWS headquarters, the chairman for the three state agencies exuded confidence that the deal was the best option so far. I think it's a pragmatic alternative which this country needs to try and I think by doing so we will actually be leading the way for the whole continent. The SGR project will see 11 kilometers of the track pass through the park that has received international recognition for being the only one located within close proximity to a capital city. But conservationists are not happy with the move. Calls against the deal have been raised in the past, with critics arguing that the passage will be a threat to wildlife conservation and the free movement of animals within the park. Uh, we have ensured that uh, animals will have their passage uh, KWS will still have its own entire land, but this uh, uh, railway line will still pass through there. The rail was initially intended to pass through Mlolongo and Athi River and would have seen residential as well as industrial property demolished. It's a cost the government is not willing to incur when it comes to compensation. To come up with this uh, very, very uh, noble, uh, amicable solution which we call a win-win uh, situation for conservationists, win-win for the project, and win-win for the government in terms of money for compensation. I want to now ask those in the conservation field to be supportive of this, because conservation and development do not need to be mutually exclusive. They can balance and they can move together. The KWS chair, although seeming not too pleased with the deal, saying that it is the only option for now. Of course we're bothered. I mean, ideally, there should be no transport in a national park. But you're a Kenyan. This process has been ongoing, and this board that I chair came in four months ago. And we found what in French they call a fait accompli. The deals were almost done. Only half of the 216-acre land annexed will be used for the actual rail. And even though the compensation amount to be given to KWS has not been revealed, it is believed that the 115 acres of wildlife habitat may be lost. A figure conservationists insist is just too high. The three main stakeholders in the signing of this deal have termed this move a pragmatic step that will save the Kenyan taxpayer billions of shillings in form of compensation if the standard gauge railway used an alternative route. Timothy Otieno, KTN News, Nairobi.